Hello everyone, myself Uday Ranjan Gaur, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Aeronautical Engineering, MLR Institute of Technology, Hyderabad. Today, we are going to have a class on topic in plate subjected to bending. We have seen in the previous module the introduction of this course and now we are moving with the first topic of this unit one. Now, thin plates have wide applications in many of aerospace applications and uh, marine applications as well as uh, automobile engineering as well. So therefore, study of these thin plates which are subjected to bending, twisting and when they are subjected to transfer loads is very, very important in the structural design. So let's start this module with uh, thin plates subjected to bending. So we'll see how the plate subjected to bending and uh, what is its effect to the deflection of the, and how it gives the deflection of the plate. Okay, so let's let me share the presentation. Yeah. It's pure bending of thin plates. <clears throat> yeah. And there are two learning outcomes in this particular module. The first one is the students can be able to explain uh, what is pure bending after this uh, session. And the students can be able to analyze the bending of thin plates when they are subjected to various bending moments. So these are the two learning outcomes which we we'll learn at the end of this class. Now, so a schematic diagram of the thin plate is shown in the figure. And uh, you can see here the thin plate, uh, which has X axis, Y axis, as well as Z axis system. So this X and Y are the major dimensions, while in Z axis, uh, the dimension is uh, thickness is very very small when you compare with uh, this both the dimensions so therefore and here mx and my are the two bending moments for unit length mx is the bending moment applied for unit length in x plane and my is the bending moment applied for unit length in the y plane so you can see here they are distributed along, uniformly distributed along the two edges to opposite edges you can see here so this is mx over here and which is distributed like this and similarly this is my which is distributed again on the other two faces of the thin plate now these thin plates when they are subjected to the bending moments mx and my and we see what results it is going to give now to understand that analysis and we simply consider one rectangular element. <clears throat> here, the thickness is somewhat large uh, taken here so as to understand, uh, to take the element as well as to depict the stress distribution because of the bending moments. And I enlarged the diagram and especially the dimension of thickness. And here, in the middle of this plate, I considered the neutral axis and where there is no compression, no tension because of the moments. So therefore, this is a neutral axis which is taken over here. And from this neutral axis, at a distance Z, I considered one small elemental strip whose depth is delta Z. And you can see the stress system acting on this particular element as sigma X in this direction and sigma Y in this direction. Now here, Another one we have to notice here it is the plate dimensions. So let delta X be the plate dimension in X axis and delta Y be the plate dimension in the Y axis. Okay. Now when MX is acted alone on the two edges, so the plate usually takes the curvature. So that curvature is shown in the right side diagram that is figure B and it is given by rho x. So rho x is nothing but the curvature because of moment mx. Similarly, when my is applied alone, then again it is going to have a curvature that is depicted by rho y. So when both mx and my acting simultaneously, 
so you get both the curvatures now these curvatures are very very important which we can relate to deflection of the plate later right so the positive curvatures uh, because of the positive bending moments produces positive displacements in z direction now here so since we applied bending moments so first of all we write what are strains in direction of x and y so strain in x direction is given by epsilon x equal to z by rho x epsilon y equal to z by rho y so this is a simple equation which are nothing but the relationship between strain and curvature so this we can write from the previous semester studies epsilon x equal to z by rho x epsilon y equal to z by rho y now also in mechanics of solids we studied the stress strain relationships so epsilon x equal to 1 by e into sigma x minus nu into sigma y and epsilon y equal to 1 by e into sigma y minus nu into sigma x so these are the stress strain relationships for the two dimensional case and substituting for epsilon x and epsilon y in these expressions and writing what is sigma x and sigma y from these two equations you will get these results now how you are writing this one so if you are if you want to get sigma what is sigma x then what we need to do from these two equations of epsilon x and epsilon y we need to eliminate sigma y for example so from the second equation we write what is sigma y okay from second equation we write what is sigma y that is nothing but what capital e into epsilon y plus nu into sigma x so that sigma y we take and substitute in place of equation 1 for epsilon x in place of sigma y then taking sigma x common and rewriting the equation you will get the first term this one so sigma x equal to ez by 1 minus nu square into 1 by rho x plus nu by rho y next similarly you can get sigma y also by eliminating sigma x from these two equations you can write sigma y okay next and so and here we need to understand one thing you are applying bending moments so ultimately they produce stresses okay so for the equilibrium so equilibrium condition the applied bending moments mx or my should be equal to the direct stress distribution okay so up the applied bending moments are mx and my and the stresses are what sigma x and sigma y so here i'm getting mx into delta y here my into delta x yeah. and on the right side sigma x into z into dy into dz and on here also sigma y into z into delta x into delta z so how we are getting this one so we are getting from the diagram let's see the diagram so now let me share the diagram with you first Wait just a second Yeah. So here, mx is the bending moment applied and in this particular direction and it is multiplied by delta y. Similarly, my is the bending moment applied on this particular axis and it should be multiplied by delta x because we consider mx and my as the bending moments per unit length. So they should multiply with respective lengths on the left side. On the right side, if you see, sigma x is acting on this particular phase so on this particular phase the dimension what this is delta y and the depth is delta z so therefore sigma x multiplied by this area delta y delta z it becomes a force but since we are writing moment equilibrium so we need to multiply with its perpendicular distance that is from here to here which is nothing but small z okay so here you will get dy into dz into z for sigma x similarly for sigma y here, this is what uh, 
your distance delta x and this distance is delta z. So the area is delta x into delta z. Perpendicular distance is z again. So therefore, we can write on the right side for sigma y, sigma y into delta z into delta x into z. So that is what is shown here. Yeah, here. So therefore, and that should be integrated from bottom layer to top layer where the integral that is limits of minus t by 2 to plus t by 2. So nx into delta y equals to minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 sigma x into z into delta y into delta z and my into delta x equal to minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 sigma y into z into delta x into delta z. Okay. So from these equations, we can write again substituting we need to substitute what is sigma x and what is sigma y here in this equation you can cancel out what is delta y on both sides in this equation you can cancel delta x on both sides so after that we need to substitute sigma x and sigma y what are sigma x and sigma y these expression so equation 7.3 so that equation is we need to substitute so if you substitute that you will get mx equal to minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 ez squared by 1 minus mu square into 1 by rho x plus mu by rho y. Here my equal to 1 by rho y plus mu by rho x. So these two equations we get for mx and my. Now here assuming this integral along with ez square by 1 minus mu square into dz in both equations as capital D. So let capital D equals to minus t by 2 to t by 2 ez squared by 1 minus mu square dz. So that is et cube by 12 into 1 minus mu square if you integrate it. Okay. And capital D is called as flexural rigidity of the plate. <coughs> so therefore, replacing this capital D in the e previous equation, and we rewrite the equation mx as d into 1 by rho x plus mu by rho y and my equal to d into 1 by rho y plus mu by rho x. Okay. So after this, yeah. And if you know what is deflection at any point, if you want to know what is the deflection at any point on the plate, then we can relate uh, the deflection to the curvature of the plate. Okay. And we know the beam curvature expression from the previous studies. So and it is given by 1 by rho x equal to minus dou square w by dou x square 1 by rho y equals to minus dou square w by dou y square so these rho x and rho y are nothing but the curvatures in x and y plane okay so and the negative sign indicates that the centers of curvature occurs above the plate so above the plate that is above neutral axis so above neutral axis we consider z as negative okay so then replacing for 1 by rho x and 1 by rho y in previous equation, we rewrite what is mx and my. So that is mx equal to minus d into dou square w by dou x square plus mu into dou square w by dou y square. Similarly, my equal to minus d into dou square w by dou y square plus mu into dou square w by dou x square. Okay. Yeah. Next. For example, so from these two expressions, mx and my, we can find out deflection at any point on the plate if we know mx and my. Okay. Further conditions, for example, in any of these two equations, if mx is zero, then what it gives dou square w by dou x square equal to minus mu into dou square w by dou y square. If my is zero here, then dou square w by dou y square equal to minus mu into dou square w by dou x square. So that is what the condition here and uh, these two conditions. So from these two conditions, we can tell that these two plates, uh, that the plate has curvatures of opposite signs because of the negative sign. So one thing we can draw from here it is, if the surface possessing two curvatures, if they are of same sign, either both positive or both negative, then it is called as synelastic surface if they has both sign. But if they are opposite sign, then it is called as anti-elastic surface, okay? And further conclusions here, and uh, if we assume mx equal to my equal to m, and therefore we can uh, we can say that 1 by rho x equal to 1 by rho y equals to 1 by rho, and substituting these two conditions, what we assume, one is 
m x equal to m y into m, and another one is one by rho x equal to one by rho y into one. So if you substitute in this previous equation here, then what we are going to get here? So we simply get one by rho equals to m divided by d into one plus two. One by rho equals to m into d m divided by d into one plus two. So this is the equation that is between curvature and the bending moment. Okay, and therefore here the deformed shape of the plate from this equation we can see that it is spherical and the curvature is given by one by rho that is equal to m by d into one plus m. Okay, so this is the result, final result what we get from this particular thin plate subjected to bending. Okay, so this is a case where if m y is zero acting uh, over the plate, so there is going to be only m x. Okay, that is the condition we are using. Okay, if m x is zero, then there is going to be only m y. Okay, so these are the individual cases if you see, but on the thin plate. Usually, both MX and MY they will act simultaneously. Okay, so that's it from the present module. So in the next module, we see thin plates subjected to bending as well as twisting. So bending we have seen here. So in the next module, we'll see what is twisting also. Okay, uh, thank you for listening.